Today we're going to start our exploration into foods by looking at the pathway to kitchen safety. Before we can even step foot into the kitchen, we need to understand what possible hazards might lead to accidents in the kitchen. There are seven types of kitchen accidents. Accidents usually lead to injuries that could be prevented by not taking shortcuts. Kitchen hazards are conditions that lead to accidental injuries. There are seven types of kitchen accidents. These are cuts, burns and fires, falls, electrical accidents, chemical poisoning, choking, or clothing and hair. First we're going to look at cuts. The best prevent the best way to handle a cut is first of all never to get one. So we're going to look at preventing cuts. When you're looking at knives, keep knives sharp. A sharp knife will make a clean, safe cut. And speaking from personal experience, these cuts are less painful. A person is less likely to cut themselves with a sharp knife. It's the dull knives that usually lead us to having to press down harder or change their grip on the knife, and that's what leads to a cut. When you're washing dishes, make sure that you wash your knives separately. Do not put them into the dishwater with the rest of your utensils or dishes. Keep them separate and handle them one at a time. When you're using a knife, never cut toward yourself, cut away from the body. I have a funny story to tell you. One time my brother was trying to open a pack of cheese and needless to say he wasn't practicing food safety guidelines and he tried to rip open the package of cheese with a knife and he pulled the knife up towards his face and ended up lodging the knife in the sept on that little divider thing in the nose. It was not the most pleasant sight that I had ever seen, but needless to say, he learned that any time that you use a knife to cut away from the body. Never under any circumstances should you point a knife at someone. And finally, make sure that when you store your knives, you store them in proper holders. This will keep you from being cut, but it will also protect the integrity of the blade. When we're looking at small appliances, please never put your fingers near the blades of blenders or of food processors. When you're not using them, keep them unplugged. If you happen to have a break, in other words, you've broken a glass, dispose of your broken glass properly with a broom. If you have glass splinters on the floor, use a wet towel or wet paper towel to blot these up. When you place the broken glass in the trash can, make sure that you put it in something that will not cut, that the glass will not cut through. First aid for cuts. First thing you're want, gonna want to do is to stop the bleeding. So cover the wound and apply pressure until the bleeding stops. Then once the bleeding stops, you're gonna wanna wash the area with soap and water and apply an antiseptic such as Neosporin and a sterile bandage. Depending upon the size of the cut, you know, a band-aid will probably do. If the severe, if the cut is severe, apply pressure and take the victim to the doctor or the hospital. Stitches may be needed. Burns and fires. If you want to prevent a burn or fire, first of all, let's start with pots, pans, and large appliances. Use pot holders to handle hot utensils. Make sure that that pot holder is not wet. Moisture will actually wick the heat into the cloth and you will get burned anyway. Open lids of pans and microwave containers away from you. Turn the handles of the pans away from the edge of the range to avoid tipping and keep the ranges and drip pans free from grease. The last thing you want to handle is a grease fire. Do not ever use water on a grease fire. Water will only spread the fire. You need to smother the fire. Keep your towels, paper, or cloth away from any heat sources. Extinguish any fires with a fire extinguisher or with baking soda. 
Use water if the fire is not a grease fire and it is a small fire. For example, if you catch a kitchen tile on fire, put it into the sink and run water over it. But never put a pan full of grease that is on fire in the sink and turn water on it. You'll just have a bigger mess than you can imagine. If you happen to burn yourself, the first thing that you want to do, especially if it's your clothing, is to stop, drop, and roll. You need to smother the flames. Place the burned area under cold running water. At this point, do not apply ointment. You are going to want to cool the area until you no longer feel a burn. If necessary, you might want to make an ice slush, which is like equal parts of ice and water, and put the burned area in it to get rid of the heat. If you develop blisters on your burn, do not break the blisters. Your skin is your first line of defense, and that would open up the way for you to get an infection. Falls in the kitchen. Always use a step stool or a ladder to reach high places. Don't use a chair. Chairs can break, chairs can tip. They're not made to be used as step stools or ladders. Secure any loose area rugs. Wipe up any spills immediately. And any time that you are spraying out a pan or rinsing it out, or any time that you are putting pan spray in the bottom of a pan, Spray it over the sink rather than over the floors to prevent slick floors. If someone has fallen and you did not witness the fall, do not move the victim. Make sure that the person is comfortable and call for help. If the person feels able to get up on their own, you can certainly allow them to do that. The thing is that you do not want to add any further injury. Electrical Issues Number one rule, avoid using water and electrical appliances at the same time. Whenever you unplug an appliance, use the plug and not the cord. Don't just yank it out of the wall. If you have a cord that is frayed, it needs to be replaced. If it can't be replaced, then buy a new appliance. It's not worth having a fire over. Do not use any damaged appliances. Make sure that everything is in proper working order. And do not overload any outlets. If you do have someone who has an electrical injury, do not touch them if they are experiencing an electrical shock. You need to remove the source of the shock with a non-conductive material such as a wooden broom handle or something plastic and then move the victim. Chemical poisoning. Chemical poisoning comes from, of course, chemicals and medicines that might be kept in the kitchen area. Make sure that you keep all hazardous products and medications out of the reach of children. Keep them in their original containers and make sure that the containers are clearly labeled. Make sure that you store all chemicals away from food. If you're adding a liquid to a recipe, make sure that you read the label two or three times to be sure it is exactly what it is that you are adding, that that is what you're supposed to add. <clears throat> if you happen to know someone or are the victim of chemical poisoning, the first thing you should always do is to call the poison control center. You need to have the container of the poison or of the chemical with you so that you can give the information to the poison control center. They will be able to assist you in giving first aid information. Choking. Choking is when food becomes lodged in our windpipe rather than our esophagus, cutting off the flow of oxygen to our lungs. Sometimes when people are choking, they may actually pass out. If you see a person who is the victim of choking, chances are they will put their hands up around their throat and will have a silent cough. As long as a person is making noise, if you hear them cough, 
If you can hear them breathe, then there is still some air exchange. Just encourage them to cough harder. But if they are not making any noise, make sure that you get immediate assistance to clear the airway so that you can restore breathing. For yourself, please be sure that you chew your food thoroughly before you swallow it. Don't try to talk or laugh when you are eating. Chances are your esophagus and your windpipe will get confused and you will have food going down the wrong place. When it comes to children, do not give them small round pieces of food such as hot dogs or carrots that are easily swallowed accidentally. If you're cutting up a hot dog, cut it up and dice it up into little cubes. That way if a child accidentally swallows it, it will not block the airway. First aid for choking, first of all, is the abdominal thrust. It Basically, you wrap your arms around the person just below or just above the belly button, just below the ribs. You take your fist and you thrust the victim upwards and continue the process until the object is dislodged and the person becomes responsive. Make sure that you send the person to the doctor or hospital as soon as possible. If the victim is unconscious, you will need to activate the emergency response system and have someone call 911. Finally, let's look at clothing and hair safety issues. You want to prevent issues with your hair and issues with your clothing getting in the way of you preparing safe food. First of all, when you're preparing food, do not wear jewelry. Jewelry can come apart, it can fall into the food, it can contaminate. You might even get your jewelry caught in a small appliance. Make sure that you do not wear jewelry. Keep your hair pulled back away from your face. That is a hygiene issue as well as a safety issue. Do not wear loose clothing. This is why you see so many people wearing aprons while they cook. It keeps their clothes close to their body and prevents it from getting into a flame. Finally, make sure that you wear closed-toed shoes. We all drop things in the kitchen and the last thing that you want to do is to further injure yourself by dropping something on your foot. If your jewelry happens to get caught in a small appliance, try to remove it to prevent cutting the victim. Same thing with the hair. Try to release the hair. Make sure that you please cut the small appliance off or turn the small appliance off before you attempt to remove the jewelry or the hair. If your hair accidentally catches on fire, smother it with a cloth. Thank you, and that is the end of our slideshow.